Jada and Stitches show. It's March, it's time for the next installment in our 2020 patchwork calendar blanket, and this month we're gonna play around with some triangles and make the hourglass square. This square, when you make it with two colors, very clearly gives you the shape of an hourglass. It's basically four triangles all meeting in the center. This particular square is made all at once, there's no cutting of yarn until the very end, and there's no sewing. So we will be changing colors on the fly, and if you're not really familiar with that technique, this is a really fun project to practice it with. Basically, you're going to have four strands of yarn connected to your square at once. You're only using one at a time, but you're dropping one, picking up another, dropping one, picking up another. Really, the most complicated part of this pattern is just keeping all of your yarn from dangling. <laughs> but we do have some tips that we'll share with you throughout the tutorial to help keep that under control. If you were to make an entire blanket using just this particular square, you could leave off the little border and just butt together all of the same colored triangles, and your blanket would end up with these big, beautiful diamonds all over it. But nothing says you have to make this square using just two colors. I went ahead and made one using four, and look how fun and bright that is, and it completely changes the concept of the hourglass. Now you have four distinctly beautiful triangles all meeting in the center. I love that sharp definition between colors. Same thing, if you were to make a blanket using just this square, you could leave off the border, put together all of the same colored triangles, and you'd end up with a pattern of big, bright diamonds repeating all over your blanket. So much potential in just one little square. So, let's grab our hooks, we'll grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up the hourglass square together. In order to make our hourglass patchwork square, if you're going to make the traditional hourglass shape, like I'm going to do here today, you're going to want two colors, a main color and a contrasting color. For each of those colors, you're going to want around 50 yards or 30 grams per color, and don't forget your border, you want around 10 yards of that as well. If you're going to make the four color square, you want approximately 25 yards per color, that's around 15 grams, and you still want around 10 yards of your border color. So your border color won't change in its amount per square. I'm using an acrylic uh, worsted weight size four yarn. It's the same yarn I've been using all along. You're gonna want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle. You might find a stitch marker or a clip is handy in this project, just so you can mark the chain three that begins every row. And we're still using the same hook, a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a 9 in the US, a size 5 in the UK. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. If you really enjoy our show and you have a lot of fun with us here, then consider supporting us. You can subscribe, click the like button, share our videos with your friends, or you can purchase a pattern at our Etsy shop, or join and become a channel member. You'll find more information in the description box down below, links to our Etsy shop, and also how to join, and there's more information if you click that join button below this browser. Just a couple of technical notes about the construction of this pattern before we get started. You will be manipulating four individual strands of yarn while you build this square. So if you're using the four color version like this one, you're going to have four individually colored strands of yarn all kind of rolling around. So all four of those balls are going to be tumbling around at your feet <laughs> as you work this square. You're not carrying any yarn. You're just sort of using one, dropping it, picking up the next and so on. And obviously I'm going to demonstrate how this looks as we go, but it's easy to tell apart your four colors if you're using four different colors in your square. If you're using a two color square, so you get that real traditional hourglass look going like I'm going to be demonstrating today, you still want to have four individual strands. And there's a, sort of a couple options for you here. If you've only got one main ball of each of these colors available to you at the moment, so your main color and your contrasting color, then you want to spool off 
around 25 to 30 yards of your main color and 25 to 35 or 25 to 30 yards of your contrasting color so that you can pull from your little spool, your little spool, and then your main ball and your main ball as you go. So you're still going to have four strands bouncing around at your feet. In both cases, it's a good idea to stop at the end of every row and sort of spin your square around or move your balls around so that they don't get all tangled up because you don't want to be sort of stuck halfway through working on this project having to detangle knots. So just take your time and at the end of every row make sure you unscramble your yarn. The other thing you can do if you're making the two-tone hourglass square like I am is if you've got more than one ball of each color just break into a new ball. So I'm finishing up uh, a main color ball and a contrasting color ball from my last square and I've also just started into um, the next two balls of the same colors that I've got. So I'm still going to have four balls of yarn bouncing around. Um, it's just that I've started into two new ones knowing full well that I'm going to be using it throughout the year. I highly recommend making yourself up a quick graph like I've done here. Draw a square, put an X through the middle of it and color in your four triangles in the color design that you want to follow. It's always a great idea to have a color graph handy when you're working on a patchwork square. It helps kind of keep you in tuned with your original color patterning design. We're going to begin with the middle triangle color. So whatever color that is on your graph, you can grab that. And in order to get a nice tight center for our square, we're going to start with a cinch circle. If you need extra help making a cinch circle, some people call it a magic circle or a sliding loop, we have a mini tutorial on this in the description box. You can check that out for a little extra super slow help. Once you've chained one to secure your circle, you can chain two more. And that chain three counts as a double crochet. Every row begins with a chain three. Every chain three will count as a double crochet in this square pattern into our circle, making sure we work over top of that short tail, we're going to work three double crochet. All right, there's chain three and three double crochet. Chain one, all corner spaces in this pattern are a chain one space. So nice and tight. We want tight small spaces, tight small stitching. So every corner is chain one only. You can pull up gently on that loop, put your work down. We're going to grab the next color. So that will be this triangle here. Whatever color that is, you can grab it. Much simpler now, we're going to make a slip knot and slip it off of our hook. So there's a slip knot, not too tight. You can take it off your hook, place it down. Bring up your work, put your working loop back on your hook. Every time you put your working loop back on your hook, make sure you sort of tighten it up, snug it down against the shaft of your knitting or your crochet hook, I should say. And then you're going to put that new loop on your hook. This slip knot is going to count as the yarn over for the first double crochet you make in your new color. And don't worry, row one is just an establishing row, so if all of this seems a little bit kind of chaotic, it'll make a lot more sense very shortly. So put that slip knot on your hook. It counts as the yarn over. You're just going to plunk your hook through the circle, so you're still working over that short blue tail. Pull up a loop. And you see how that now looks like you yarned over to create a double crochet? You're going to double crochet using your second color. That loop, every time you change colors, that loop gets pulled out a bit. You're going to pull that string back and tighten it up. We want a tiny, tiny little space in between our colors. Don't worry about your short tails. We can worry about them later. Try not to confuse your strands. <laughs> and now, working into that cinch circle, so still working over top of that little blue tail, don't worry so much about the pink one, you're going to work three more double crochet. All 
Right, we should have four double crochet in the new color. You're going to chain one, pull up in that loop, set your work down. We are now moving on to the bottom triangle color, so whatever that color is, grab it. Same thing as the second color transition, we're going to make a slip knot. And not too tight, you're going to slip it back off your hook, pick up your square, put your hook back in your working loop, tighten it up, and now you can take that new loop and put it on. It counts as the yarn over for the first double crochet in your third triangle. So pull that little tail out of the way, just stick your hook through that circle, pick up a loop now, and you'll have your slip knot and your picked up loop there. Just double crochet as normal. That loop from the other color is all stretched out, so you're going to take that strand, pull it nice and tight. Helps if you have eight hands. <laughs> there we go. All nice and tight. You're going to have three little strands, three little loops, or I should say three little tails hanging here now. Don't confuse your main cinching tail with the other two, so just try to keep them out of the way. But we're still working over top of that one into our circle. Work three more regular old double crochet now with your third color. And trust me, all of this first row pain is going to be worth it. <laughs> it's much easier from here on out. So there's four double crochet in our third triangle color. And for me, that's the same color as the one I started with. Chain one, pull up on that loop, put it down, and grab your last triangle color. So now we're on to this one, whatever color that is, you can grab that now. For me, I'm back to my pink. Same thing, we're going to make a slip knot. Not too tight. Slip it back off your hook. Pick up your square. Your hook goes back in your working loop. Tighten that up. You can put the new loop on your hook. That counts as the yarn over. Get that little tail out of the way. There we go. And let's just make sure that that little tail we need to work over is still there. There it is. So we'll ignore all the other little tails. And now we double crochet as normal. So we pick up a loop, double crochet, tighten up on that last color change loop. Aha, home stretch, three more, double crochet. All right, that's four double crochet in the last color. You're going to chain one, and before you do anything else, take that little short tail you've been working over all along, pull it as tightly shut as you can. So you just have a zero space in the middle of your square. It looks a little circular right now, but we're going to see to that. You're going to find the top of the chain three that you began with, slip your hook through it, and slip stitch to join. Okay, pull up on that loop. Let's look at the damage. <laughs> it looks like an alien. <laughs> But that's okay, at the end of every, um, every row, it's good to just sort of take stock, make sure that all of your strands aren't all tangled up. Don't worry about the little short tails because you're going to sort of weave them all in later. Um, and as you get further and further out from the center, they won't even be in your fingers way, so don't worry about it. But here is the beginning of that hourglass square. It's a little circular right now, but it will become much more square the more rows we add but doesn't that look cool? I just love changing colors on the fly. And there's no nothing on the back that's going to suggest that you're, you're sort of carrying a color or that there's any weird kind of linking of colors. That's what we should all be looking at right now. And now we can move on to row two. We're all gonna put our hook back in our loop, tighten things back up. Now, at the end of every row or the beginning of each row, depending on how you wanna look at it, we want to go back the way we came. So we're not going around and around, we are instead going to flip our square over at the end of every row 
And to begin each row, we want to, using the same color that we finished the last row with, so because it's right here, it's in our hands, we're going to slip stitch into that chain one space. And now we're ready to start the next row. So you flip your square at the end of every row and slip stitch into the chain one space you just made with the same color. And that way we can work backwards and the next color will be waiting for us when we get to the next corner. Every row begins with a chain three. That chain three counts the double crochet. It's sitting in the corner space, which is perfect because we want to work another double crochet into that corner space. So every corner space gets two double crochet of the color that you're working. Before you leave, you might want to just mark that chain three with a slip stitch, a stitch marker, a clip, a piece of yarn, anything, just so that it's in your face and you know what you're looking at when you get back round to it, because this square construction looks a little bit different than other squares you may have made. So it's marked and now you won't miss it when you get back to it. We have four stitches here that we want to double crochet into the top of. So you're going to double crochet into each of these stitches. And when you get back to the color change, the top of the last stitch will always be in the other color. So whatever color is the next one you're going into, it will always, the top of that stitch is always going to be that other color, so don't be confused. And it also might not even look like there's anything underneath it. So you could also look like, you could also look at it like you have to work a double crochet into the imaginary stitch that's a different color. Because <laughs> that does put it on top of your other stitch, your fourth stitch. And then you work your two double crochet into the chain one space. Don't worry, this isn't going to throw off the look of your square, but you want to make sure you don't miss adding a stitch for that last stitch of the row before, and it's going to look like that every single row, and I'll show that to you a couple more times. Chain one and drop that color. Bunk. There's your next color waiting for you, ready to go. We're going to work two double crochet in the new color into that same chain one space. You're going to tighten up that last color so that that loops nice and tight. I'll just finish my two double crochet into that chain one space. So there's my two double crochet. Same thing, I'm going to have four stitches to work across on the way back. So I'm going to work a double crochet into the top of each of them. But that last double crochet stitch that I'm working is going to be sort of in the chain one space because the top of the last stitch is always the color of the next triangle. So don't let it throw you off. Just throw it off, an extra stitch into that chain one space, but it counts for that last stitch and then work your two double crochet into the chain one space. So you're going to have eight stitches in each side or eight stitches per color, depending on what you're doing at the end of row two. So every row increases by four stitches per side, 16 stitches in total for the whole row. Chain one and drop that color. There's the next color waiting for you all ready to go. You're gonna double crochet twice into the same chain one space. You can even finish your second double crochet in that chain one space before you reach back and just tighten up that last loop. And now you've got four stitches to work across. Don't be fooled by that last stitch. The last stitch is always going to be a different color and it's always going to look like it's sort of part of the chain one space. There's my last stitch. It's technically for this one. It looks like it's in the chain one space. Who cares? <laughs> work your two double crochet into that same space. Chain one and drop that color. We're on the home stretch now. There's our stitch marker marking that first chain three that began the row. Here's our next color all ready to go and waiting for us. You're going to double crochet twice into that chain one space. And like I said, you can get both of them done before you reach back and tighten up that color change loop. You've got four stitches to work across.
And now, because you're coming up on the chain three that began the whole row, easy to see because we marked it, you can also see where you came out of sort of the top of that chain three from the previous row. So that looks like an actual stitch. You're gonna treat it like an actual stitch. So the last stitch of your row will always sort of be properly sitting inside or inside the top of an actual stitch. I've obviously had to join my yarn here. I love patchwork. <laughs> But before we finish the row, we have to work two more double crochet into that chain one stitch or chain one space. It's marked by the chain three that came out of it. That's why I say it's helpful to mark it. Work two double crochet into that same corner space. Don't miss it. Then you're going to chain one. You can take your stitch marker off or your, your clip, whatever you're using. Find the top of the chain three and join. All right, you might wanna pull up on that loop, take your hook out and straighten out your strings. And let's lay this thing down and take a look at it. You can sort of pull out the four corners and you can really see that hourglass that triangle, four different triangles is really starting. It really starts to come together after the third row. So if you're, if you're still kind of getting used to the color change and dropping a strand and picking up the next one, it gets easier and easier to see the bigger and bigger it gets. Here's a little example inspiration. <laughs> That's a finished square. That's the one I made previously with the four different colors. So every time you flip your square, so you flip it at the end of every single row, every other row you're gonna get this neat little kind of ridge effect happening and it goes all the way around in a pretty little square pattern. I just think that looks so cute. And of course, here's our two rows in for the one we're working on. That's the two colors. And you can sort of see that first neat little square of ridges that we get every time we flip our uh, square back and forth. So that's what it's going to look like. So <laughs> stay with me. At the end of row two, you'll have eight stitches across each side. Eight times four is 24. You should have 24 double crochets in total. That includes the chain three that began the entire row. We're gonna put our hooks back in, tighten up that loop. So, in order to start our next row, we have to flip so that we're going back across the same color that we just sort of finished with. You need to slip stitch into that chain one corner space to start yourself off. You're going to chain three, that counts as a double crochet, and then you're going to double crochet once more into that same space. So every space on, out, on either side of your triangle, you always start with two, you do a double crochet in each of those stitches across and you finish with two of the same color in the next corner. So two double crochets on each side of your triangle. I recommend that you grab your little clip or your stitch marker and just mark that chain three so that you recognize it when you get back there. And now, because we had eight stitches all the way across um, that side in the previous row, you're going to work a double crochet into each of those eight stitches before you get over to your next corner space. Here I am getting up to the next corner space. The next stitch that I need to remember to work, the top of it is the same color as the next triangle. So don't be confused, don't miss it. There's the stitch, that's technically the top of it. Um, and because of the way we, we join the yarn, it looks like there's nothing underneath it. Just stick your last double crochet in there. It counts as working into the top of that last stitch. And then remember those two double crochets that you have to work into the chain one corner space before you change colors. Chain one, drop that color. There's the next color waiting for you. You know you're going in the right direction because that next color is always ready and waiting for you. And then you just start. Two double crochet of the new color worked into that chain one corner space. Before you leave, you might wanna just tighten up on that color loop change. And now you've got eight new stitches to work a double crochet into the top of. I'm coming up to the chain one space. That last stitch, it's a different color. I'm gonna work 
underneath it as though it was a proper stitch. It looks like the chain one space. It sort of technically is, but don't forget to work the last double crochet. It's technically the top of the stitch. And then you work your last two double crochets into the chain one space. Chain one, drop that color. There's the next one ready to go. Work two double crochet into the chain one space, double crochet in each of those eight stitches across, two double crochet into the next chain one corner space, chain one, drop your yarn, and finish the last side with the last color. I'm just finishing the end of my third row. This is my last triangle. I'm coming up to the end and I know I am because there's my clip. I can take it out now because I know where I'm at. The last stitch I work into the top of a stitch you can actually see so it's actually there. <laughs> That's just sort of the way this pattern works out. Don't forget to work the last two double crochet into that chain one corner space that sits beneath the chain three that began the whole row. Remember you want to work two double crochet in each chain one corner space on either side of your triangle. So it'll be two and two, two and two, two and two, two and two for every single row. That's why you end up with an increase of four stitches per side. So we started with four, we went to eight, we are now 12 stitches across each side. Don't forget to chain one right at the end. You can find the top of that chain three and join with a slip stitch. Pull up, you can take a moment to detangle your yarn, spin your square around if you have to. Um, it might buckle a little bit. You might see a little bit of rippling. That's totally normal. It's also because we are crocheting tightly and also if you are using yarns that are slightly different thicknesses, you might have a little bit of buckling. Don't worry about it. It's totally normal. It'll disappear as soon as we have all of our squares stitched together and or you block it. So don't worry about that. But at the end of row three, you can really start to see that gorgeous strict definition of color between all of the triangle sides. Um, there's a definite hourglass shape going on there, and uh, oh, it's just looking so nice. <laughs> Once you're finished admiring your work, and I recommend you do that at the end of every row, because why not? <laughs> Don't forget that you are still using the same color you finished the last row with. You want to flip your work. You want to work back across the same color, obviously. You want to slip stitch into that chain one space to start. That allows you to chain three, counts as a double crochet. That chain three is sitting there in that chain one corner space. Don't forget to work that second double crochet and then double crochet into each of those stitches. As you end a section, so you get to the end of a section and you're working your last couple of double crochets into the top of those stitches, don't forget that the last double crochet stitch the top of it is always going to be a different color. It's always going to be kind of part of that chain one corner space, but always make sure that you include it. Then work your two double crochets into that chain one corner space. Chain one and then drop that yarn. The next yarn is always going to be waiting for you. So you, you know you're always going in the right direction because that yarn is always ready and willing, ready to go when you get there. Begin with those two double crochets in the chain one corner space. You can pause. Always tighten up on those color change loops. You can make them as tight as you want. You don't even have to see them. It's not like you need to pay any attention to them. You just need a space in between to work successive rows into, but tighten up on it. Then work a double crochet in the top of each of those existing stitches. Don't forget that the one at the end of every section always has a different color across the top and is kind of part of that chain one corner space. Work your last two double crochets, chain one before you leave, drop that color and continue on with the next color. I'm just coming up on the end of row four. There's my chain three that began the whole thing. I'm accustomed to how it looks, but if you still find you're not sure where it is or that you kind of, it tends to get lost as you're sort of working on the square, don't forget that you should mark it with your little stitch marker or your clip every row, just so that you kind of have something to aim for and you don't lose it in all of the stitches because sometimes it can look a little complicated. It doesn't look like a typical granny square, for example. So don't forget you can use your stitch marker every row. Once you get comfortable though spotting it, you can leave it off. That last stitch is actually, there's actually a place to put it. 
I'm going to work my last two double crochets into that chain one corner space. There we go. Chain one and slip stitch to join at the top of that chain three that began the whole row. Pull up on the loop, detangle all my yarns. I'm now looking at the back of my square. I can pull out the corners. I can do this every row if I want. Um, I do like to just sort of take a look at it, make sure that I haven't missed anything. Make sure that each side has increased by four stitches each row. So now we're at 16 stitches across the side of each of those triangles. And then you're just going to kind of continue with this pattern. Like I said, every side increases by four stitches per row. So that's the end of row four. We're at 16 stitches per side. At the end of row five, you'll be at 20. At the end of row six, you'll be at 24. At the end of row seven, you'll be at 28. At the end of row eight, you'll be at 32. And at the end of row nine, you'll be at 36 stitches per side. So just think of it like you're increasing by four stitches each row. So four stitches by row four is 16. Four stitches by row five is 20. Sort of basic times table stuff. It's kind of a helpful way to keep track of it. And that way you know you've got the right number of stitches per side. Whenever you put your hook back in your loop, tighten things up. Remember, you have to go back across the same color that you just finished with. So if you put your hook back in, that's where you slip stitch. You always need to turn your square at the end of every row. Find that little chain one space, slip stitch into it. Don't forget to chain three. Double crochet into the same place before you leave. Double crochet into the top of every single stitch in each section, remembering that the last stitch in that section has a different colored stitch top. Don't forget it. It's sort of part of the chain one corner space. Work your two double crochets to finish off your section into the chain one space. Chain one to create the space for the next row. Drop your yarn and you always know you're going in the right direction because that new color is sitting there waiting for you. So I'm going to let you work away at that. Rows five through nine on your own and I will catch up with you soon. I've just finished my ninth row and I want to just reiterate the stitch counts per side. So this is not per entire row, it's just per side so that you can kind of count up each of your triangles to make sure that you've got the right numbers. First of all, you should have 36 stitches across each side in your last row. We begin with four, we increase by four, we go to eight, then 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36. So 36 stitches on each side per triangle in your last row. That's it. There is a definite and beautiful hourglass shape going there, no matter which way you look at it. Now we want to finish off all of those strings. So you're going to cut them all. You can leave yourself a few inches of tail on each string. So make sure you've snipped all four of them. The last one you, you sort of finish with is your typical fasten off. You just fasten off. But with the other three, you want to make sure that they don't become, um, they don't sort of undo themselves. So you're going to thread each of them up in your yarn needle and pull it nice and tight, just like you were doing every single row to keep those little spaces really, really small. You're just going to double back through one sort of little loop of it. We don't want to make that too small. Let me just pull that back open for you. There we go. So you want to sort of bring your yarn underneath one of those loops and then you can fasten off that way. So it's a nice tight knot. I'm going to show that to you once more. So you sort of thread up that little tail, pass it underneath so underneath one of those little loops right there. And then back out through that loop that you just made. And that will keep it from untying. You're going to make sure that you pull that nice and tight. Do that for all three. And then you can weave those tails in underneath some of the similar colored stitches. So if it's 
whatever color you're fastening off, make sure you weave it in under the stitches of the same color. And weave in the tails of the little short tails that were left behind at the very beginning. So just take a moment with your yarn needle and weave in all eight of those tails. We're going to add our border now. So grab your border color and your hook. We're going to make a slip knot. We're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch in what's technically a stitch, but is also the chain one corner. And you'll remember that stitch that always ends up being the top of it is the different color as the color change. You're just going to slip your hook in the corner space. We're going to pretend it's a stitch. It's going to count as a stitch. <laughs> We're going to chain three to begin. The chain three does count as a double crochet. There we go. And you're just going to double crochet in the top of each stitch all the way across. And they should all be pretty clear. You will have 36 stitches, including your chain three, at the end of the first side of your border row. And I'll catch up with you there. When you get across an entire side, count them up, you should have 36 stitches. When you get to the corner, you're just going to chain two, and this is just to turn the corner. We're not actually counting these chains as stitches. Then the first stitch, remember the top of it is actually a different color, so you're just going to work that first stitch right into the chain one little space there. And then continue double crocheting as normal into the top of each stitch. You should still have 36 stitches across the second side. Chain two to turn the corner, 36 stitches across the third side, chain two to turn the corner, 36 stitches across the last and fourth side. And I'll catch up with you near the beginning. Once you get all the way back round to the beginning, you're going to work your last double crochet into the top of your last stitch. Count them up, make sure you've got 36 stitches on each side. Chain your last two and you can join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three that began the whole thing. That's it. You can snip your yarn, fasten off, take a moment to weave in that tail across the back of some of those stitches. And there we go. Remember, you might have a little bit of buckling or some rippling, right, especially in the edges where you've made your nice tight little seams. But don't worry, just by laying your hand on it, maybe sort of gently heating it up, pulling out the corners a little bit, um, it'll all flatten down. And if that still looks a little rubbly or wibbly, little <laughs> wiggly, or ripply, <laughs> it will disappear once you stitch all of your squares together and give it a good block. And that is the Hourglass Patchwork Square. Takes a little time to kind of get going, but once you're up and running, it doesn't come together too slowly. <laughs> I love that sharp definition between the edges, and I love how those four triangles are all made at the same time. No cutting of yarn, no sewing, absolutely love it. Don't worry about sizing. We've said this before, we're going to say it throughout the year. If your squares are all slightly different sizes, don't worry about it. As long as your stitch count is the same, so you've got 36 stitches across each side of your squares, and ignore those little chain two corners, then all of your squares will fit together. We'll get the whole thing stitched together, then you can block it, and all of those sizing or rippling or wiggling or whatever kind of issues you think you might have will disappear overall in the final product. So don't worry about that as we go. Instead, have fun. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed making this square along with us this week, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, stay colorful, <laughs> and we'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.